Every country has its share of gangsters and drug dealers. Let's take a look at the five richest criminal gangs in the world. Before proceeding further, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification icon so you would get notified when we upload the next video. Number five, Hell's Angels. The Hell's Angels are a well-known motorcycle club that has a reputation, well-founded according to the FBI, as being a criminal enterprise. The clubs in the United States and Canada have incorporated into a legitimate business to protect their symbols and stop others from making money from the group. While the official club statements deny organized criminal activity, law enforcement in a variety of countries have arrested club members caught doing crimes. There does not appear to be a hierarchical structure among various Hells Angels groups, so individual cells may participate or avoid criminal activity. Although a story of success, the worldwide notoriety of the Hells Angels meant Barger was a controversial figure. Sonny Barger set up the Hells Angels in 1957 following the disbanding of his former motorcycle group, the Oakland Panthers. The group became instantly recognizable as each member donned the iconic skull patch on their biker jackets. Barger had several run-ins with the police and was admitted to jail on several occasions. His longest stint came in 1973 when he served four and a half years of a 10-year sentence for possession of narcotics and a weapon. The Hells Angels remains an active club worldwide to this day. As per its official website, the Hells Angels currently has 467 charters in 59 countries around the world. As per Celebrity Net Worth, Barger had a net worth of $500,000 before he passed away. His role as the original Hells Angel gave Barger a fair deal of notoriety. Such a platform enabled him to venture out into other avenues, such as books, film, and TV. It is thought that this is where Barger made the majority of his money. He revealed in his statement that he had passed peacefully following a brief battle with cancer. This wasn't the first time Barger had to deal with cancer though. The Hells Angel had his vocal cords removed following a throat cancer diagnosis in 1983, but was able to relearn how to communicate using his stomach muscles. Number four, Sinaloa Cartel. Today, the Sinaloa Cartel is the largest cartel being operated in Mexico. It has an estimated revenue of $3 billion. They're estimated to have a market share of 60% of the $6.5 billion of drug revenues in Mexico. El Chapo Guzman is the leader of the Sinaloa cartel. He is infamous for performing the most shocking prison escapes. He runs one of the richest criminal organizations in the world. They smuggle cocaine into the US. The Sinaloa cartel is infamous for its control of the North American illegal drug trade. The state of Sinaloa in Mexico is where a substantial amount of marijuana and opium plants are grown. The farming families in the region turned their efforts to working with drug cartels in South America as both suppliers and traffickers. Eventually, they formed their own criminal organization, a loose collection of various drug trafficking families. The cartel has survived less by violence than by bribing officials in the Mexican government. However, they do not avoid using violent means to protect their organization when necessary. The violence is usually directed against other cartels, yet they frequently are in conflict with the Mexican military. The infamous Sinaloa cartel boss is currently imprisoned in one of the most secure prisons in the US. El Chapo was first arrested in Guatemala in 1993 and extradited to Mexico, where he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for murder and drug trafficking. But in 2001, the Mexican drug kingpin escaped from prison. He was apprehended again in 2014 in Sinaloa and again escaped from prison through a tunnel the following year. In January 2016, Mexican officials announced that El Chapo had been captured again. He was extradited to the US the following year. El Chapo was sentenced to spend the rest of his days in the ADX Florence Supermax prison in Colorado after being sentenced to life imprisonment in 2019. But even when he's behind bars, the Sinaloa cartel remained one of the world's most powerful drug trafficking syndicates. The Mexican drug cartel has been known for carrying out assassinations, murders, and torture to protect its turf. The Sinaloa cartel seems to have taken its style from Colombia's Cali cartel by creating strong connections to Mexico's political and economic elite. It has also successfully penetrated government and security forces in areas where the cartel operates. Number three. The Knights Templar Cartel 
The Knights Templar Cartel, Spanish Los Caballeros Templarios, was a Mexican criminal organization originally composed of the remnants of La Familia Michoacana, drug cartel based in the Mexican state of Michoacan. With the first alleged death of Francisco Montes and co-founder Nazario Moreno, leaders of La Familia Michoacana cartel on December 9, 2010, a split between the cartel leaders emerged. Some of the cartel co-founders, the Montes brothers, Fred Montes CM and Frank Montes, Servando Gomez Martinez and Dionisio Loya Plancarte formed into a royalty of La Familia calling itself Cavaleros Templarios or Knights Templar. A large part of La Familia Michoacana left with them to form the Knights Templar group, while Jose de Jesus Mendez Vargas kept the leadership of the now greatly diminished Familia Michoacana, starting a fight for the control of Michoacan. The Knights Templar cartel indoctrinates its operatives to fight and die for the cartel. They have taken full control of the now defunct La Familia Michoacana operations in states including Michoacan, Guerrero, the state of Mexico, and Morelos. Along with the Sinaloa cartel and Gulf cartel, the Knights Templar formed a short-lived joint enforcer gang called Cartelis Unidos, or United Cartels, or La Resistencia, composed of well-retrained gunmen dedicated to kill and expel Los Zetas cartel operatives who were invading the former Familia Michoacana territories in Michoacan and Jalisco. The Templar's most recent feud is against the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, which is trying to gain full control of Jalisco and Michoacan, and also against civilian vigilant and militia groups that are fighting back the criminals in an attempt to clear Michoacan from the Knights Templar. Number 2. The Orizuela Bros Gilberto Rodriguez Orizuela was the leader of the Colombian Cali Cartel and is currently serving a 30-year sentence in the United States. He's seeking early release from prison because he suffers from prostate and colon cancer. His brother Miguel Rodriguez Orihuela is also serving a prison sentence at a federal prison in Pennsylvania. We count them among the most successful drug lords because even though they can't enjoy their immense wealth, they agreed to a plea deal with the U.S. prosecutors that gave immunity to more than two dozen of family members. Number 1. Medellin Cartel the Medellin Cartel is a powerful, huge, and highly coordinated drug cartel in Colombia. It's a semi-terrorist crime organization that originated in the city of Medellin, Colombia, founded and led by Pablo Escobar. He controlled an estimated 40% of the Medellin drug cartel's business and is considered one of the world's wealthiest gangsters. The organization was notorious for the illegal cocaine trade, violence for political aims, bombings, and kidnappings. It generated over $20 billion annually. Medellin is a city in Colombia that is known worldwide mainly because of its cartel. Its leader and founder, Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, is even more infamous. He is the inspiration and main character of Netflix's Narcos series. The cartel was active between the mid-1970s and early 1990s in Bolivia, Canada, Colombia, Panama, Peru, and the United States. Their peak was in the 1980s when their cocaine trafficking business was bringing in about $60 million a day in profits. They supplied at least 85% of the cocaine flowing into the United States at the time. The business was bringing in so much that they were spending about $2,500 every month on rubber bands to secure all the money they were making. Escobar himself, dubbed the king of cocaine and richest criminal of all time, had a peak net worth of $30 billion at the time of his death in 1993. Adjusted for inflation, this is approximately $60 billion today. Do share with us in the comments if you have more information about these crime organizations. Thanks for watching.